Hello and welcome to another CAD clip talking about AutoCAD 2007 3D and uh, very much like the um, 3D rotate we're talking about the 3D move command here on my dashboard. 3D move command very similar where we can constrain our movement once again we've had this type of command in the past but never worked uh, didn't work as, as nice and again is another a uh, great tool in our um, arsenal of, of creating 3D objects here, improvements in our AutoCAD 2007. So the first thing I want to note is that um, if we are in, it works a little bit to, to digress in visual styles. If I go to 2D wireframe and I click on a 3D solid, okay, I'm going to get some grips, etc. in here, and my icon here isn't going to change, okay, first and foremost. If I'm in one of the other, um, let's see, 3D wireframe, you'll notice that sometimes this icon changes when you click on a solid, sometimes it doesn't. Let's just click on a line. Even a line works, so it doesn't even have to be a 3D object. So the first thing I want to talk about with our 3D move before we even push the button is if you're in 2D wireframe you're not going to get this icon lighting up which is what we're about to do. So any one of the 3D options and I can go into you know 3D hidden line if I click on an object and then I go over to my UCS icon over here okay if I click on one of these axes what it does is it constrains it to that axis okay not even by starting a command. You click on an object and then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to hover over that and pick. Okay. Now what happens is, is I'm moving that along that one axis. Okay. It just happens to be a circle. I wanted to get the big mass element. There we go. Notice the axis. Now I'm going to hover over this, click, and now I'm moving up and if I just type a displacement like 10, it'll go up by 10 units. Okay. Up in the air. Okay, undo that back maybe. Okay, so without even doing the, the 3D move command, you can move in 3D by clicking on an object, hover over here, pick, and then up and down, and then also note you can turn your ortho on and off. But what I'm defining is the displacement distance. So that's the first and foremost. It does not work if you are in a 2D wireframe. Okay, what happens if we're in a top view and we're in a 3D Okay, if I can click on this object, will I get the same effect with my icon down here? I won't. Okay, it's not highlighting. So that means well, it's telling me I need to be in a 3D view. Let's change myself to be in conceptual view and see if that makes a difference. No. So my viewpoint has to be kind of a 3D viewpoint for this to work. Click on here, pick on an axis, pick on that axis and then slide it along and then type in a number. Okay, That is really how the 3D move command works except for with the 3D move command we start our 3D move. We can select any amount of objects that we want just like a regular move. We hit enter and now on our crosshairs we get this lovely um, constraining set of axis and we combine that with our dynamic UCS watch what happens here if my dynamic UCS is off I can go and I can just you know turn my O snap on and I can snap to a point and then I can move those objects along that you know based on that point and this is down flat so I'm just moving it nothing exciting there okay now if I hover over an axis I can go in here and I can pick and then I can move up and down okay move those up or I can type in a number okay again 3d move pick the objects let's go over to here let's take this guy okay one thing I want to do 3d move pick this mass element here okay hit enter and now as I'm going along here notice my I undid my UCS. If I don't turn my dynamic UCS, I can use O snap to pick that point, okay, anywhere I want, and then I can now hover over here and select the axis I want to constrain it to, and then I can type in a number. Very, very handy, 
Okay. Now I can go back again, do my 3D move, pick on my object, hit enter, and now if my dynamic UCS is on, I can actually hover over objects, and you'll see that it will actually pick up the um, plane that those objects are drawn. Maybe take my O snap off while I'm doing this. Okay. So notice that as you're moving around, it's letting you select a plane because I'm using my 3D move in combination with my dynamic UCS. The key here is, you see I'm hovering over here, it's telling me this is going to be the plane on which I'm working. And then once you start to move, then you can go in here and you can pick the axis you want to move along. Then you type in a number and as well, we're using our object snap, okay, sorry, and our ortho. So doing this, we're using a combination of our 3D move, selecting an object, enter. We're using our dynamic UCS and we're also using our ortho and we can also use our O snap down here if we want as well to select a point that we want to move along. And then after we start to move, we can pick which axis we want to constrain the move to and then type in a number. The other thing I noticed while I was preparing for this lesson is a difference here. I wanted to show a little bit about the push pull. Notice I had a separate object there. And first I went in and I just kind of used my dynamic UCS, drew a rectangle there and then used my push pull and pulled that out. Okay. One thing I want to note that when you do that push pull, that is all part of that one object. If I erase that, okay, if I move this, that all gets moved as one object because I did a push pull off of that surface as opposed to rather than drawing a rectangle and push pulling it go right in here use the box command using my dynamic UCS turning my ortho off and hovering over there oh sorry D try this again box hover over here click And then, oh, I'm still getting the wrong surface here. There we go. Click and then pull. Okay, let me do that one more time for you. Using my dynamic UCS and the box, hover over here. Make sure you're getting on the right plane. You can see the outline and sometimes it's easier to change your visual style. Pick and then pull. This, when I go to do my 3D move, enter, pick, is a separate object is all I'm saying so when you do your push pull off of a surface it creates the new object as part of the original object of the surface it was dragged on so have a maybe do a repeat of that exercise whenever we see these axis before we finish our placement we're free to pick an axis that we want to drag along and then place that out so a lot easier uh, to move things especially when we are um, in 3d and we want to take those objects and slide them along without using our X Y and Z point filters which is what we've used in the past again you can use your objects your object tracking to drop in nodes and use your object tracking Use your object snap, use your polar, use all of these, including DUCS, with our 3D move command. Or, as I said in the very beginning, as soon as you click on something, you don't even have to say 3D move. You can just pick an axis and slide it as long as you're not in 3D mode uh, or 2D wireframe. So, there's our 3D move. Works a lot like our uh, works a lot like our 3D rotate where we can constrain it to these nice little um, visual axis that uh, Autodesk has built in there for us.